Carl, you're talking to people, and I'll ask you both this. I'll start with you, Tom. You're, you're talking to people in places. You're in Kentucky, which I think is a really interesting choice. You're in Maine. You're going to go to Nevada. What are you hearing? What are you learning? This is what I want to know. Everyone comes in preconceptions. Sure. When you're hearing, talking to people in these places, tell me one thing you've learned that you're learning in doing this job and going around talking to people. The people of Kentucky, the people of Maine, the people everywhere I go are incredibly resilient people. They want to hear the message of the Democratic Party. They want to hear that optimistic message of inclusion. How are we going to make their lives better? How are we going to do what Ted Kennedy taught me, which is to help the common man and the common woman to get that security for them and their family and their children and grandchildren. And, and that's what they want. There's incredible um, energy out here. And when we put our values out there and Tell them clearly what we're fighting for. We're fighting for them. What about you? I'm sorry, guys. You messed up choosing Perez. Perez is really bad at this job. He's extremely bad at this. Like, he comes across completely inauthentic, like Hillary Clinton level inauthentic. Almost like a robot. He seems to, like, gin himself up in some cases in order to kind of... But it comes across as fake. It's just come across as extremely phony. Now look, part of this is because he's sitting beside the real thing, which means anything that comes out of Perez's mouth, if it's empty, if it's platitude-filled, it's going to look ridiculous just based on comparison. Sanders is being very specific about what he's talking about. Perez, dodging questions left and right, giving empty rhetoric, that doesn't mean a thing. I have no idea what Perez talked about in this interview, at least from a substantive standpoint. If you're telling me, he asked you, what are you hearing from people out in the public, out in the country, and you're telling me that those people are resilient, that's amazing. I mean, come on, dude. I can tell you, just if you are even any level of social media, any honest level of social media, you're having a unity to it. Why are you having a unity to it? Which means, meaning... If there is unity, if it's clear unity, if it's not something you need to pay attention to, if it's not something you need to focus your attention on, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. There would be no reason to have a unity to work if there was actual unity. If there is disunity, there is disunity for a reason. Now, are you telling me that you're going from around the country and you're interacting with people in these districts, some of these red districts, and the only thing you can tell me that you've been getting back is that these are strong people. They didn't have any criticisms of your party. You're in Republican district. That Republican district didn't have any criticism of your party. There are no progressives in that particular area that came to those conventions. Are you telling me that those progressives have no critiques or issues associated with your party? What are you saying? What are you saying? Telling me that Kentucky or Maine is full of strong people is not the same thing as answering the question of what are you hearing across the country as you go out into the country with this unity tour. You're not making any sense. Tom Perez is horrible at this job. You guys screwed up choosing him. You would have been better off choosing Ellison, even if you're going to ignore the things that Ellison might have been trying to push as a progressive values. You could have completely ignored it. But if you wanted to con people to get back into this party. This inauthentic robot is the worst person you could have chosen for this particular role. And I can't say the worst, but he's bad at this. He's extremely bad at this. Absolutely. You, Senator, you agree with that? What I see and hear is a lot more pain and a lot more discontent than you see on television yep. or you read in the papers. Just this morning, Tom and I were at a yep. panel, unbelievable panel, of a woman who grew up in incredible poverty, went to college and was actually hungry when she was in college, didn't have enough money to feed herself. Her story, mm -hmm. you can multiply millions of times throughout this country. The Democratic Party has got to hear that pain. Mm. And it has got to say, you know what? We are not, we're gonna stand up to those people who have the power, both economically and politically, and we are gonna take them on. And we're gonna bring millions of people into the Democratic Party to create a party which will create a government that represents all Americans, not just the 1%. And that right there, do you see the difference? Like, so, and look, 
to Bernie's credit, he is saying, finally, I mean, at the very least overtly, we're going to bring people back into the Democratic Party. Now, for all those people who pushed back on me when I said, do the sheepdogging people into the party, is it considered sheepdogging when he himself is an independent who called for a political revolution and said his goal, like he just said, is to get people back into the Democratic Party? Are you going to attack Sanders for attacking Sanders in this particular case? And understand, pulling people back into the Democratic Party, whether you realize it or not, that's not an insult. Whether it's an insult or not, it's relative. It's perspective. If you're a Democrat and Sanders is saying, I'm getting people back into the Democratic Party, then there is no issue with that statement. If you're not a Democrat, if you don't particularly like the Democratic Party, well, yeah, that's an insult. That's a slur. The point I'm getting at is anybody who's pushing back on me when I'm saying that, whether you realize it or not, it, it, it's almost like that's an implicit, almost like an imp implicit agreement. Or well, at the very least, it's an implicit agreement that you don't particularly like that idea. If you recognize that that idea is a slur, when I'm saying he's trying to sheepdog people back into the party. Now, you may say, well, sheepdog, I don't necessarily like that word because it gives a connotation. The connotation that it gives is he's trying to scoop people back into that party. Sanders himself says that. If you think that's an insult, if you think that, oh, dude, I don't necessarily like you saying that about Sanders. Why don't you like me saying that about Sanders? Do you have a particular perspective of the Democratic Party? If that answer is yes, you have a perspective that's negative, the Democratic Party, then yeah. If you believe that people are saying they're sheepdogging people into that party, you're going to think that's an insult. Sanders himself just said he wants to get people into the Democratic Party. So just, just be aware. I'm not making this out of whole cloth. I'm not making this up. This is based off of A, his behavior, and B, he just said it himself. It, what I want to get to, though, is if you notice the difference in those answers, I talked to a woman today, and this woman said she was going hungry while she was in college. That is his focus. He's very specific about that focus. This is what gets me up in the morning. This is what stiffens my spine. This is what helps me to go out and face the world. It's clear. It's what he mentioned. It's what he said. It makes sense. It's his focus. It's how, it's how his, his reality box. It's how it's narrowed. That makes sense. Tom Perez was supposed to be at that meeting with him. That's what Bernie Sanders said. Why didn't Tom Perez say that? Why didn't Tom Perez say that? Tom Perez didn't bring up anybody. Chris Hayes asked a pretty expansive question in the sense of what are you hearing? Why didn't Tom Perez? Tom Perez couldn't name one person. Like no person, no, not even one person moved Tom Perez to the point where he, that image stuck in his mind of, Wow, man, yeah, I have to help in this particular capacity. The best that Tom Perez can muster was, those are some really good, strong people. Yes, that's great. You're blowing smoke in their ass, but that's, again, not the answer to the question. What Sanders said was answering the question. Again, I'm making this point. Do you see the disparity between these things? One of these things. It's not like the other. It's not like the other at all. You can hear it in every word that they utter. You can hear it in every question that they answer. Or, in this case, don't answer it. It is very clear. Or, at the very least, it's clear what motivates Sanders. I would make the case it doesn't matter what motivates Perez. Because, ultimately, it's not the same thing that motivates Sanders. And they're trying to say unity is shared values. Meaning, if there's a disparity between those things, then it's not unity. They may be fighting for one particular goal, you know, resistance against Trump. But let's get off this idea of shared values. Those two things are not the same. And yeah, Sanders pulling people back into the party when it's very clear as day that those things are not the same. I just don't think it's going to get him what he wants. Those people are going to start to vote in a tribal way. You're adding credibility to a party that has none. This interview by itself should get across to you that this party is bankrupt. This party is bankrupt. You, heard, you can hear what Sanders is saying, and look, you can listen to the interview without my commentary. I'll put a link to it. But you hear what Sanders is saying. He's clear, unequivocal. There's no hedging. This is what I believe in. This is what I want to accomplish. This is what we need to do as a country. And you hear Perez. Which one of those things? But let, let me ask you this. 
if what Sanders is saying is so drastically different than what Perez is saying, and Sanders is trying to get people back into that party. What are the values of the party that he's trying to get those people back into? I think that's what I'm getting at. And do you honestly believe that Perez sitting here right now, not answering these questions, not telling you in earnest, honest language, substantively, what that party represents and the things that they're shooting for and aiming for, do you believe that's helpful? And do you believe that people will be able to have a clear difference between Sanders and the party itself, which means when those people go out to vote, if it's a corporate Democrat that's running, are they going to know that that corporate Democrat is not a progressive? Are they going to know that just because Sanders was on stage with him doesn't necessarily mean that that particular Democrat is towing Sanders' line? Are people going to know, people who have a very kind of a disparate vision of politics where they don't necessarily pay attention to it, are they going to know that there's a difference in those quantities when they're placing their vote for that particular candidate? And if they're not going to know that, if they don't know when they pull that lever for that corporate establishment candidate, if they don't know that that person is not functioning like Sanders, then yes, that person was scammed into making that vote. He's being thrown out like bait and they're reeling those people back in. The question is, Unless those people are voting, knowing full well that that candidate is not like Sanders, and that candidate, for the most part, is just an establishment hack. If those people don't know that, then yeah, those people, by definition, are being scammed. That woman, Chris, incidentally, uh, is reliant on the Affordable Care Act for some medical care that she needs. And if she didn't have it, she would not have her lifeline. And, and that's the story we hear everywhere. And that's why the Republicans in the House are never going to be able to bring up that repeal, because it helps too many people. We'll see what happens. Senator Bernie Sanders and DNC Chair Te Tom Perez, thanks for taking some time on this. That was a fascinating conversation. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hay I want to thank my, the subscriber that um, twittered me on this. I, it's a great interview. And I like hearing um, Sanders' perspective because ultimately I never thought Sanders was a sellout. I don't like what he's doing. I don't necessarily like his association with the party. I think I understand why he's doing it. I think it goes in two folds. Resists Trump in that sense. Or at the very least, he, I think he feels Trump's agenda is pretty dangerous. I agree that that agenda is probably dangerous. So align yourself with something that can attack that particular thing. I also think he probably made deals. Essentially, I will support the Democratic Party and Clinton if there are certain structures in place that change that he believes will help to get that agenda pushed. Look, the question becomes whether or not you believe that is going to be successful. My argument is no, it's not going to be successful that once you get people into the party, they're going to vote in a tribal way, not necessarily based on, you know, the, the political things that are going on. Ultimately, even in this interview, does it really look like the Democratic Party is substantively different than what the Democratic Party was when they lost the election? No. They don't, they, there's no difference there. It's the exact same party. The only difference is Sanders is sitting right there beside Team Tom, giving cover to Team Tom. That's the only difference I see. That's really the only difference I see. So, yes, Sanders is Sanders. Sanders is always Sanders. Sanders, in this interview, is the reason why we love Sanders. But in the same token, the reason why people feel a particular way about him that may be considered somewhat negative is also in this interview, sitting beside Tom Perez and getting people back into a party. That at the very least, based off of what their chair was saying, has it changed a goddamn thing and has no intention of changing a goddamn thing. So, alright guys, if you enjoyed the